Good morning, church. It's good to be with you this morning. I start with a congratulations to all of our students that have moved on to the next grade or graduated from their respective schools. Uh, I especially am uh, grateful and, uh, and celebrating our St. James preschoolers who have graduated on to kindergarten and our fifth graders, some of whom have been with us up to nine years who are moving on uh, to New Horizons and uh, certainly ready to, to do that and meet it with success. Um, and a special thanks to all those teachers, administrators, and parents who have finished the year in, in creative ways that have uh, uh, pushed and stretched them as well as the, the students. So, uh, so congratulations to all. Also want to say a huge, huge thank you to all those who've participated in the collection of snow packets. Uh, amazingly, we collected 460 plus uh, snow packets. It was uh, impressive to see all of them assembled uh, in the, the foyer of the school. Uh, and also, uh, we raised over $1,000. So that's a quite, quite uh, impressive. Uh, another announcement that I have for uh, the group is that we are finishing up our study of Marcus Borg's uh, meeting Jesus again for the first time with our adult formation folks. And um, next, they will be reading uh, the Book of Joy. We figured that was a very appropriate uh, subject and a much needed subject to discuss um, in this season. Uh, so it's a, a, a little bit lighter and, and meant to, to lift folks up. And so whether you plan to participate uh, in the uh, online discussions or whether you uh, just uh, would be interested in reading the book, uh, please uh, let Jim Kipney uh, or Alice know that you are interested and we'll make sure that you get a book. Um, it's the Book of Joy and it is uh, Desmond Tutu and uh, the, the Dalai Lama uh, discussing uh, how do we have that kind of enduring joy that's uh, independent of uh, the environments we find ourselves in. So uh, I hope you consider, consider reading that as well. And finally, I'd like to discuss just for a minute uh, our reopening. Uh, I know other places of worship in the community are already uh, open. Uh, I know others are considering what their reopening would look like. And uh, uh, one of the truths of being an Episcopal church is that that decision is, uh, is not just made at St. James, it's, it's made throughout our diocese and, um, and with the approval of the, the diocese. Uh, and, and right now we do not have that green light, but even if we did, uh, I spent a good bit of, uh, of, of my time thinking about what it would look like when we reopen. Uh, we have a unique space uh, that doesn't necessarily have uh, ample room for, for easy uh, uh, entrance and exit uh, for all of us coming together uh, and maintaining that, that kind of distance. Our, our center aisle is, 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 is fairly narrow. Um, what would our worship look like? Uh, music uh, is, is uh, sadly contraindicated and so many of the things that give our community such, uh, such a, an incarnational feel, the, uh, the human touch uh, is, is or will be absent when we regather. And so, so wanting to regather uh, with a worship service that, uh, uh, that reflects who we are as a worshiping community, uh, wanting to do so safely, uh, wanting to do so in a way that, um, that honors and encourages uh, broad participation from our members and, uh, and doesn't uh, leave out a good bit of our uh, more vulnerable population. Uh, all need to be considered. And, uh, and right now, uh, this is the, the safest uh, and most edifying way for us to be able to, to worship. Uh, and I know uh, it's not easy being apart from one another, and it's certainly not easy um, uh, leading worship uh, apart from our, our beautiful space at St. James, but uh, but there is a lot to be considered and, and certainly know that we do so uh, very, very carefully and um, and with a desire for us to um, to return to, uh, to, to our, our home of worship, uh, but that does not define us as a church where we worship or how we worship. Um, we, are, we are the body of Christ uh, in our respective houses, um, in the way that we care for one another, and those uh, uh, snow packets, I think, reflect that, um, and, and all the ways that we continue to reach out to one another reflect that. Uh, I've said, uh, if you'd asked me a year ago to close my eyes uh, and envision church, uh, it probably would have been me putting a, a communion wafer uh, into, into someone's hands, uh, that moment uh, that, that kind of comes to mind when I think of church. 
uh, and that has expanded uh, quite a bit over the last few months. And, and I see uh, when I close my eyes and envision St. James uh, and envision what it is to be church, I see so much of the care that's, uh, that's been extended to, to, to individuals uh, in, in this community and, and the way that people reach out to those who are alone or um, are vulnerable in any way and uh, just to see the love that, uh, that permeates this community. That's what defines us as church, uh, not the, when we would uh, be able to come together and our commitment to being church isn't defined by uh, how quickly we regather uh, but by how much uh, we reflect church when we can't regather. And, um, and I assure you uh, that we are having those conversations and that we'll keep you abreast uh, of when we'll be able to come back together uh, in worship. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, this is how we gather together, and it's good to be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. And we just want to extend our congratulations to all of the graduates. We're very proud of you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. To my brothers and sisters and the community at St. James, I want to share a few words with you today. Homer said, be of good cheer. A cheerful disposition is luminous. It illuminates everyone and everything. Being grumpy has no rewards. Be of good cheer. Being cheerful is an attitude. We all choose our moods. We can be glad, giving thanks for all of our blessings, or we can focus in on ourselves and be down and gloomy. Today, when you're alone, monitor your disposition. If it rains, you have the power to spread sunshine. Use it. Those are some words from uh, Grace Notes, Alexander Stoddard. While we are talking about sunshine and being cheerful, um, our granddaughter graduated from preschool at St. James. I want to give a shout out to all of the graduates of the preschool at St. James and a special shout out to those fifth graders who graduated. I understand they had a parade. They are all in our hearts and minds as they start a new journey. Oh, the places they will go. Congratulations to all these graduates, their families, friends. I look forward to when I can see all of you in person and up front at St. James. Be of good cheer today. The prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan and Jennifer, our bishops, Ben and Ted, our clergy. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, especially for Donald, our president, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States. We pray also for those in the armed forces, their families and all deployed in harm's way, especially Mark. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, the lonely, the burdened, the anxious, and those in prison, especially during this season. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially for Karen, Judy, Helen, Carol, Steve, Bonnie, Omani, Christine, Steve, Judy, John, Joan, Kay, Ansel, Tina, Linda, Fred, K, 
Kay, Ed, Barbara, Peter, Marie, and for those whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for all health care and emergency workers, those who continue to put themselves at an increased risk to provide essential services, and those facing economic insecurity as a result of COVID-19. I ask your prayer for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find or be found by God. I ask your prayers for St. James Episcopal Church and School, our Stephen Ministries, ministers and their care partners. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died and for those whom we now name either silently or aloud. We pray especially for all who have given their lives in the service and defense of this nation. I ask your prayers for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for the faithful and growing relationship between First Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church. We give thanks for our many blessings, which we now name either silently or aloud. We give thanks for our St. James Episcopal School preschool and fifth grade graduates, and for all who celebrate the completion of another academic year. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. From wherever we find ourselves, we offer our prayers to you, the God who promises to abide with us. During this time, may we know and trust your presence in our lives. Continue to bind us together Embolden us with your church to be signs and agents as your, of your hope, your healing, and your love. We pray this in the name of your Son, who came and dwelt among us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him going to heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. 
Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and it's a day where we not only uh, honor and remember the men and women who have given their lives in service to this country, uh, but I think it's also a time for us to reflect on, on our responsibility to honor those lives, uh, not just on this particular day, but with what we do with those freedoms uh, and what we do as, as citizens of this great country. Uh, that they were willing to give everything for. Uh, how are we carrying that mantle? Uh, how are we honoring that legacy? And, and how we um, exercise our, our, our democracy uh, and how we uh, uh, represent the country and how we lead our, our, our country. And, and so it's a, an enormous responsibility. And uh, it's had me thinking of that last scene in Saving Private Ryan. And the, the context of it is that um, Private Ryan has lost three brothers. Uh, unbeknownst to him, he's lost three brothers uh, in combat. And um, because of the incredible weight that that has on, uh, on a family, they've uh, decided to go uh, and take men behind uh, enemy lines to, um, to ensure the safety of, of Private Ryan. And uh, it is a, a harrowing mission uh, one that uh, resulted in, in the loss of a, a tremendous amount of life uh, and uh, in, in one of the climactic scenes as uh, uh, the main character who's, who's led them on this, this journey uh, has essentially accomplished his mission at an incredibly uh, high cost. Uh, he says uh, to Private Ryan, earn this uh, on the bridge. Uh, and, um, and then it goes from there to uh, the very end of the movie and um, uh, Ryan is a, a much older man, a senior, uh, maybe 50 years removed from, from that moment. Uh, and he's there at Normandy uh, looking at the, uh, at the memorial to, to the captain that, that saved him. And, uh, and you can tell the weight that, uh, that he's carrying uh, in the moment. Uh, and he turns to his, his wife uh, and says, uh, have I been a good man? Have I lived a good life? Uh, and you can see that uh, that, that question uh, kind of came into uh, his consciousness uh, every morning as, as he woke up, that he asked himself, uh, was it worth it uh, for these men uh, who gave their lives for me? Uh, have I lived my life uh, as a tribute? Uh, as as an honor uh, to those men, uh, and and I think about that, and in, in, on this day, uh, as we celebrate Memorial Day, that uh, that is not just about remembering their uh, their sacrifice and, and and the cost of our freedom, but that uh, but that we remember the responsibility of of living our collective lives uh, in honor of that, in celebration of that, and uh, and in perpetuation of. Uh, of the virtues and, and the character of this nation that uh, the people the people were willing to give their lives to defend, um, and, and and it it's an awesome responsibility, um, 
And it's not inconsistent with where we are in our church year. Uh, I think one of the reasons that that image came to mind is that I um, was reading uh, the reading, the gospel reading for today and the, um, the reading from Acts from today, and I started to imagine what it must have been like for Jesus uh, in that moment. Um, and they're different moments in Acts than they are in, in John. What John is doing is, um, is he sort of paused the historical narrative for a while uh, to give us a glimpse into, into, into Jesus' uh, thoughts and, and, and this prayer uh, that he has for all of us. And, and it takes place in John's Gospel uh, on that Maundy Thursday uh, after he's uh, described what's going to happen after that Last Supper. Uh, he's talking to his, his disciples and he's praying for his disciples. And, um, and I think in his psyche, and this is always a dangerous thing to, to presume Jesus' psyche, but I imagine he wants his life to matter. That all the things that he taught his disciples, all of the, um, the hardships of, of the life that he's lived, uh, all that he was sent to do, uh, that it not only be fulfilled, that he not only uh, accomplished uh, what he set out to accomplish in this life, to reveal God's love um, and, and concern for the world, to give his life uh, so that, that we would never be separated from God again, uh, so that we would know the, the fullness of that love. Uh, but I imagine that he wanted to understand uh, that his life would reverberate in the lives of those who came after uh, that the disciples would understand uh, what it is to live out of that compassion, out of that very nature of who God is, um, that his teaching, uh, that his miracles, that, uh, that all the aspects of his life um, would matter. Um, and he's whispering in his disciples' ears, make it count, make it worth it. Live lives that reflect the compassion of God that led all the way to death on the cross. And that's our call, uh, to live lives that matter, to live lives that reflect the compassion of God. Uh, Jesus uh, knew he was going to be taken up, and he alludes to that in this gospel discourse, but in Acts, uh, we're more at that scene where Jesus uh, knows that his time has come um, uh, to be ascended to the Father, to be raised up, uh, and he's leaving the church. Uh, he's leaving the people that he's cared for, the people that he loves deeply. Um, he's leaving all of them in the hands uh, of the disciples and the church that will come after. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And he's equipped all of them uh, with all the tools that they need to, to do what, what he's tasked them to do. Uh, but in that moment, I think he wants to know uh, that they can handle it, that they will do it. <clears throat> that they will continue uh, to love and care for one another with the full compassion that Jesus reflected in, in his life and in his ministry. Um, and he's gifted the Holy Spirit. And he said to him, don't look up to heaven. Don't look at what uh, God is doing in me. Uh, certainly look at what God has done in me, what God has done in, um, in my life and in my death and in my new life, uh, raised from the dead. Uh, but look at what God is doing in you. Look at what God has equipped in you for you to do in the world. Um, and that's our, our mission, not only proclaim what God has done through Jesus Christ, uh, but to be what God is doing uh, in us. Uh, that, that the ascension is a reminder that, you know, things were a particular way before Jesus came. God uh, was in the world. Um, uh, God had created the world. Uh, God spoke uh, to those in the world. Um, and then Jesus came in the flesh and taught us and revealed to us uh, what it was uh, to understand the, the heart of God. Um, and he did so so fully that he even gave his life uh, to death on the cross so that we might never, ever uh, be separated from that reality. Um, and then Jesus was lifted up. Uh, but that we didn't return back to the way that things were, uh, that this wasn't a momentary uh, uh, moment in history, uh, that the reality of the universe was changed in, in the life of Jesus, uh, not just uh, in the saving work of Jesus, 
uh, but in that revelation that continues to reverberate through history. And that is the Christian responsibility. That is the call um, that as Jesus ascended to heaven, that we wouldn't just uh, leave our gaze there at that beautiful window behind the altar, um, uh, but that that reflection, that beautiful uh, image uh, might remind us of, of what uh, Jesus has left in us, the presence of the living God and the responsibility to be God's hands and feet in the world, uh, to be the care, the compassion, uh, that womb, uh, the very nature of who God is, uh, that we're called to be one. And that's uh, Jesus's prayer for us, uh, that we might be one, that we might care uh, for each other, uh, the way that Jesus cared for us, that we might put aside our own opinions, uh, uh, our own um, self-preservations, uh, that we would put aside ourselves uh, to love one another, to be one uh, with one another. And I think uh, there's a collision between uh, our collective national responsibility and our responsibility as Christians, that uh, that, that oneness is, is something we're called to do out of both responsibilities. Um, and uh, certainly our Christian responsibility uh, is uh, at the core of who we are, uh, but that we might uh, live with compassion uh, and a desire for oneness, uh, that that might be the, the, the driving identity uh, in us. Uh, uh, not whether we think this way or this way, uh, not uh, our, uh, our neighborhood, not our uh, nation of origin, uh, but our identity as children of Christ, as folks, uh, as Jesus ascended to heaven, uh, we're left with the responsibility uh, to care for God's people, to be one with one another as God uh, in Jesus is one with God the Father. Uh, that we might experience that oneness in our lives, that our lives might reflect that oneness to the world. Amen. This is Come With Us, O Blessed Jesus, sung to the tune of Suogon. Come with us, O blessed Jesus, with us evermore to be. And though leaving now thine altar, let us nevermore leave thee. Be thou one with us forever in our life, thy love divine. Our own flesh and blood has taken, and to us thou givest thine. praised 
In our hearts as in thy heaven Be enraptured and thems raised Let the mighty chorus ever Sing its glad exultant songs let its hymn be heard forever, peace for which creation longs. Hi, St. James. We miss you, St. James. We hope to see you guys soon. Hi, St. James. We miss you all. We hope everybody stays healthy, happy, and well. And we can't wait to see you all again. Be safe. We hope to see you soon. Remember that life is short. And we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind. Make haste to love. May the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Our worship is now ended and our service in the world begins. Let us go forth to proclaim that Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We'd also like to send a big shout out to the fifth grade and preschool graduates of St. James Episcopal School. Congratulations and best of luck. Congratulations for me as well, and like for all of you to remember all the valuable lessons you learned here at St. James School and Church, and they're going to serve you well for the rest of your life. Congratulations. We hope to see you all soon. We'll Bye-bye.